I'll be building creations from Space Flight Simulator in 3D using a game called Juno New Origins. We'll start off with the moon lander, then work our way up to the three-stage rocket, then I'll try to make creations that you guys have sent me, as well as showcasing real rockets that players have built in the game that exist in real life. First, let's load the moon lander so we can see what it looks like. We need two landing legs, two fuel tanks, a separator, capsule, parachute, and engine. In Juno, we can grab the fuel tanks from this menu and place them both in the build space. We can drag the sliders to make the parts as large or small as we'd like, and we can even make it look like a satellite dish. In this case, we need them to be one meter radius because that's what they are in SFS. Then add the separator, the capsule, and with the landing legs, we can enable symmetry by clicking X to add four of them. Click here to launch the rocket, and the engine is not strong enough to lift off, but that's okay because the moon lander in SFS can't anyways. One thing we could do is switch the launch site directly to the moon and confirm that we can launch from the moon's gravity. I just noticed that there's these guys as well, but we'll save them from harm till later. Now let's build our way up to the three-stage rocket in Juno New Origin. I'd say we add onto the moon lander so we could also land on the moon, so we place a separator, two 2x4 fuel tanks, an engine, another separator, a bunch more 2x4 fuel tanks, and then add a nose cone, and lastly use the symmetry mode to copy this part of the rocket around four times. Now we launch it and see if we can get to orbit. I messed up the staging a little bit, but I think we're good. So far it's going well, but I think we need to start tipping more. These controls are so sensitive, like I tap the W key and it just starts spinning. Help, I can't stop spinning. Wait, there's this thing on the side of the screen that allows you to set the heading of the rocket and it just points in that direction. You're saying I could have used this instead of using controls? Okay, I think it's safe to say we need to try again. This time we'll launch the rocket with the heading locator and as we go up, we can change the angle that the rocket is facing. The top of the atmosphere is 60 kilometers, so once the rocket trajectory gets above 60 kilometers, we can turn it horizontal, time warp, and keep burning the engines horizontally until the trajectory becomes an orbit. I just got a DM from a dev and he said, by the way, you can literally program the rocket to get to orbit autonomously? No shot. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, let's do it. Over here is program flow, operators, craft instructions, craft information, events, variables, lists, and more. First to explain how everything works, on start we can set the throttle to 100 and then activate stages which causes the rocket to immediately start when we click launch. Now we can go back and start editing the pitch which is related to the blue part of the nav sphere. So at different altitudes we can change the pitch based on how high the rocket is and the higher the rocket goes the closer the pitch gets to zero without even needing to touch your game. For example, after we launch the rocket, we wait until the altitude of the rocket is higher than the altitude of the number we put here. Let's say a thousand meters. Once the rocket reaches that height, for example, we can make it pitch over to zero degrees. To test it, we save the rocket and launch it. A few seconds later after launch, the rocket passes a thousand meters and turns sideways. This is great because now all I have to do is make a bunch of these statements and wait for different altitudes and pitch the rocket more and more until we get to orbit. After about an hour of messing around, here's the code I came up with. When we launch the rocket, these actions progressively tilt the rocket more and more. Once we get to 52 kilometers, the heading gets set to zero. Then at 70 kilometers, we move to the next stage over here. After that, the rocket coasts for about 20 seconds till it reaches 160 kilometers, where it then expends most of its fuel over 54 seconds. Then the rocket shuts off, and by this point, the rocket has a very nice orbit. But this begs the question if I can launch multiple rockets at the same time and still have them all reach an orbit. And there's only one way to find out. I first started with two rockets to see how consistent the code was. It wasn't. It was terrible. The rocket's never ended up flying next to each other. So after a while with messing with the code, the rockets became way more consistent. Look at that, it's working. Finally got two of them to orbit at the same time. I then added three more rockets and it's actually working incredibly well. Now I gotta finish up my monstrosity and add as many rockets as possible. And holy moly, it's actually working. Oh my gosh, there are so many rockets. And the best part, I don't even have to control any of them. Oh sh wait, no, they're starting to move away. So far, we've only scratched the surface of what's possible in the game. We've only gotten to orbit, so let's try landing on Brigo. Br Brigo? Brigo? First, I have to add more fuel tanks to the rocket, and then once we get back to orbit, we can make a transfer node right here, time warp the rocket to that location, and make our way to Brigo. After a bit of time warping, we are now within the sphere of influence, which means we can now reverse burn to lower our trajectory. And after about 10 minutes of carefully slowing the rocket down, we finally landed on Brigo. Now we can get our dog Yuri G out onto the surface so we can plant our first flag. Uh, what? Man, she toppled a whole rocket ship. Hold up, what does jetpack power do? Oh, shit. Oh. <laughs> Dude, he goes so fast. Whee! Wait, how do we go up? 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 Fuck. <laughs> shit. He died. Now, I even think we can get to Luna without adding any more fuel. We already have the autonomous program to get us all the way to the orbit. 
And all we gotta do is create a maneuver node to change our velocity so we can enter the sphere of influence of the moon. Then we can click on this button to time warp to the node, and once we get there, we can click on lock maneuver. This way the rocket will point in the vector that will match its velocity with the maneuver node that we made earlier. We can time warp to the sphere of influence of Luna, get a stable orbit, and begin to make our descent to the surface. And now we can eject the astronaut so we can walk on Luna. He did it again! He freaking knocked the ship over! What the fuck? Can I stand it back up again? Hold on. So we can use a grapple hook, right? Ah, I see. So can we like pull the rocket? Actually, wait, wait, wait. We go like this. Jetpack power 500%. We just try flinging the rocket or pulling it with us. <laughs> What is happening? Oh, we pulled the rocket. I don't have a quick save. Now it's time to see what other people managed to build in the game. For example, someone programmed SFS inside of Juno New Origins. And with this creation, you can actually fly a 2D rocket around within the game. And even after a few minutes, you can make it to orbit. But that's not all. But like, look at this. Someone made a whole aircraft carrier. Dude, what the heck? This is insane. And it even has a bottom too? My mind is blown away by how detailed this thing is. Okay, moving on. What? What, an Apache longbow? Dude, this is insane. Brother, what? This is sick. This helicopter is insane. Yeah, of course the rotor spin too. Oh my gosh, no way. I really hope we can take off. Oh, <laughs> well, that was short-lived. <laughs> 